Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, I will thank you. Lord, we bless you. Glorify your name, Lord. Thank you again for another day. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done in the past for us. This is the first midweek service in the month of May. We are grateful for all you have done in the past from the beginning of the year to this very hour. We are much more grateful for the things you are doing tonight and the things we believe you also have done tomorrow. Father, we gather together to hear your word. We pray, mighty God, for the spirit of understanding. Lord, you will illuminate our hearts, illuminate our eyes. Give us understanding of your word. Lord, that we will be able to walk worthy of you unto all pleasing in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That we will be able to be fruitful in our knowledge of God. Yes, that we will increase also in your knowledge. Yes. Father in heaven, I ask in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that wherever your sons, your daughters may be tonight, connecting to this meeting, I pray may your presence, O God, be mighty in those places. I pray, mighty God, Lord, that your fire will burn, your fire, your fire will burn, whatever we did, interfere with this gathering tonight in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father in heaven, I say, have your way. Let your name be glorified. Those who are sick, O oh God, as we hear your word and we sit at your presence, may you heal the sick. May you set captives free. May you do the things that only you can do in the mighty name of Jesus. So that at the end of the day, all the glory and honor be, be to you and you alone in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you once again, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Okay, so welcome every one of us to this midweek service, our first midweek service in the month of uh, May. While we thank the Lord for all he did for us in the past, we also want to be grateful to the things he have packaged for us this month of May. Indeed, like they say, May is the fifth month of the year. And number five being the number of grace, we trust that this month the grace of God will be abundant upon us. By the grace of God, those things that you are trusting God for, we pray that the grace of God will manifest them in your life. Every mountain standing between you and your blessing, we say grace, grace upon the mountain, and the mountain be removed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We ask tonight, even at this time, that the Lord Himself alone will be glorified that those who have been warring and battling against you may the lord bring every battle to an end in your life even as we go through this month even tonight in the mighty name of jesus christ father we say thank you we give you praise and glory lord hallelujah blessed be the name of the lord blessed be the name of the lord blessed be the name of the lord hallelujah okay so brethren i titled today's meeting the blessing of abraham the blessing of Abraham. Hallelujah. The blessing of Abraham. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. So we're going to be looking at the blessing of Abraham. Now, but the question is, what is the blessing of Abraham? Take note, I didn't say the blessings. I'm not saying the blessings. I said the blessing of Abraham. The blessing of Abraham. Because truly there's the difference between blessing, of course, you know, blessing is singular and the blessings is plural. But we are talking about the blessing of Abraham. And by the grace of God, I believe that a good understanding of this, this very important subject, will change our perception of Christianity in relation to material and other worldly possessions of blessings, as the case may be. You know, it is a blessing, it is a blessing that opens the door or qualifies us to receive all other blessings, so to speak. It is a blessing, one blessing, okay, that opens the door or qualifies you, us, to receive all other blessings, every other thing that you will receive in your relation with God whether it be protection, be it material blessing, financial blessing, whatever it may be. It is this singular blessing 
that will qualify you, that will open the door, you know, for you to those blessings. Be it the, the, the Holy Spirit, receiving of the Holy Spirit, which is very important, okay? It is this blessing that will determine it. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So let's kick off by looking at Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. I read verses 1 and 2 and then 5 to 14. Paul speaking by the Spirit of the living God. He said, O foolish Galatians, who had bewitched you that you should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ had evidently had been evidently set forth, crucified among you. This only will I learn of you. One thing I want to learn of you. Receive you the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Receive you the spirit. Receive you the spirit, the Holy Ghost, the spirit of God. Did you receive it nobody? By the hearing of faith or by the works of the law. How? How? Now, it's important we have discussed this before. Okay? The importance of faith. Okay? The works of faith. Now, you receive the Spirit. You have received the Spirit. You became a child of God by faith. You became a child of God by faith. So why are you now trying to, as it were, okay, think that you can now receive any other thing by the works of the law, by strict obedience to the law? You can't start from faith or begin with faith and then end by the laws of Moses, strict obedience, adherence. To the laws of Moses. Faith is all the way. By faith we are saved. The Bible says we are saved by grace through faith. So our Christianity is hinged on what? On the grace of God. Which we acted on by the faith of God as well. Because both the faith and the grace... We receive them from God. They are all the gifts of God. So that none of us can boast. Verse 5. He therefore that ministered to you the Spirit. He that ministered to the Spirit. And worked miracles. Excuse me. He therefore that ministered to you the Spirit and worked miracles among you. Do it he eat by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? So that's a very big question. You receive the Spirit. The question is, was it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Hearing of faith is hearing the word of God as it relates to all that the Lord Jesus Christ accomplished for us through his death and his resurrection. Even as Abraham believed God, Abraham believed God, Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Abraham believed God. It was accounted to him for righteousness. <laughs> Take note of that. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. Abraham believed God. Now what? Abraham acted in faith. And what was the result? The result was that righteousness was imputed into his account. Thank you, Jesus. So, he said, even the same, or know therefore, that they which are of faith, the same faith, are the children of Abraham. Abraham was a man of faith. So, you want to call yourself a child of Abraham, and so to receive the blessing of Abraham, then you must act 
in the same way that Abraham acted. Abraham believed God. What was imputed to him and counted to him was righteousness. So, and the scripture foreseeing, the says, that, it, that God will justify the hidden through faith. Preach before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all the nations be blessed. All the nations. All the nations of the world. All the nations. This brings us to the fact that nobody was born a Christian. Like some who want to believe. Some want to, to make themselves... Well, I, I want to say some want to be deceived by the devil. You can be born in a Christian home, but that does not make you or will not make you a Christian. Your parents would have been Christians at the time they gave birth to you because salvation, as it were, is personal. You must come to the place where you personally will acknowledge the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Having believed in your heart, having believed in your heart, so when you were born, you would have been in the place to believe at that your state of infancy. It's only when you grow up to differentiate between good and evil, to be able to give account for the to or take responsibilities for your actions, then you can say, Lord, I believe first I'm a sinner because of the sins of Adam. And every other sin I have committed. And I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, which of course is the foundation of the church. Because the Lord said to Peter, on this revelation, in acknowledging that I, I am the Christ, the Son of the living God, is on this, he says, the church shall be built. So you believe it. And you say, Jesus, you are my Lord and my Savior. Because it's not just in Romans, he said what? He said, he said, with your heart, you believed unto what? Unto righteousness. Just like Abraham believed. And you accounted to him unto righteousness. Now, with your heart, you believe unto, and with your mouth, confession, you make confession unto salvation. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so he said the, the, the scriptures foreseen that God will justify the hidden. The hidden. Any person, every other person, every person that comes into this world, God will justify the person through faith. Pray before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all the nations be blessed. So then they which be of faith. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. Then they would be of faith. Those who will believe will be blessed with faithful Abraham. Verse 10. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. Did you see that? That's why Paul, was, Paul began by saying, did you start with faith? Haven't started with faith. Do you want to make yourself perfect by going back to the works of the law and then bringing yourself under a curse? Because they that are of the works of the law, he says, they are what? Under the curse. For it is written, Curse is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the Lord to do them. I just want to thank God at this moment because, listen, there is nobody, and I want to repeat, there is nobody that want to say, well, I want to uh, live or obey the commandments, the commandments that God gave to Moses. You know, particularly all those laws that are in the book of Leviticus. And then you think you're able to obey them and live particularly in this day, in this generation we are in, where unrighteousness is being made, you know, the new normal. It is not possible. There are a lot of things, child of God, God has done for us, particularly 
as it relates to the New Testament. New Testament. So you cannot say, I want to obey the or I depend on the laws of Moses, like some will tell you, I'm born again, I'm saved because I obey the Ten Commandments. You can never be born again because you, the Ten Commandments are just, I mean, just part of the law, just part of them, just ten. There are a lot of commandments you cannot obey. A lot, a lot of those laws you cannot keep. No man has kept them successfully. Okay? So God, in his mercy, because of his love, sent Jesus, who is the end of the law, to everyone that believes. In Christ Jesus, we are complete. Jesus becomes the completeness of the law for you, if only you will believe in him. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, our God. <laughs> Amen. So, he says again, Cause is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written, in the book of the law to do them. You can do one today, but will you do it tomorrow? Is it continuing? You cannot continue. You cannot keep it to the end. Verse 11. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident. Nobody, therefore, can be justified by doing or obeying those commandments. For the just shall live by faith. Only by faith, only by faith, you start by faith, you will end by faith. You cannot start by the law, I mean by faith, and end by the law. Hallelujah. Thank you, our God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Say that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident. For the just shall live by faith. That's the faith of Abraham, the faith of God. Hallelujah. And the law is not of faith. The law is not of faith. But that the man that doeth them shall live by them. The law is not of faith. So if you want to continue on the way of the law, then continue there. But unfortunately, you cannot be justified by the works of the law. And you may also not be able to continue there to the end. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Why? Because he is the end of the law to all that we believe in him. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, curse is everyone that hangeth on the tree. Of course, we talked about this during the uh, uh, season of refreshing, okay, you have redeemed off from the curse of the law according to scripture, okay, because curse any person that is crucified or hung on a tree because of his sins, like we, we saw, that is only hardened criminal, top criminals. It's not all sins committed in the Old Testament were worthy of death, but. He said, if someone commit a sin worthy of death, the person should be what should be hung on the on the cross. So it's for someone who we consider today a hardened criminal. So Jesus Christ was considered a hardened criminal. All our sins, the sins of humanity from Adam to death, have been brought upon him. Okay, so that we can be made the righteousness of God in him. So he becomes the completeness or the end of the law to us. He fulfilled the law for us. Now, he said, Cause is everyone that hung on the tree. Look at verse 14. Verse 14, praise the name of the Lord. That the blessing, that the blessing of Abraham, and this is where we are, that the blessing, not the blessings, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith, that the blessing of Abraham might come up who the Gentiles. Thank you, our Lord. Now, what does it mean? We have seen that when Abraham believed, what was accounted to him, imputed into his account, was what? Was righteousness. <laughs> The blessing of Abraham is not money. 
the blessing of Abraham is not the child Isaac that he received. The blessing of Abraham are not the material things. The silver, the gold, the camels, the ass, and all of those things that he received. Those were not the blessing of Abraham. <laughs> Hallelujah. So this is where the mistake has always been. Because when we begin to sing the blessing of Abraham, man, the blessing of Abraham is the righteousness that God imputed into his account. The blessing of Abraham, I repeat, when he believed God, what, what, what God gave to him was not the Isaac, as it were, first and foremost. Like I said, it is a blessing that opens the door for all other blessings. So the blessing, which is the righteousness that God imputed into his account, opened the door for all other blessings, for Isaac to come in and any other blessing. Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for what? For righteousness. And so he said, they that believed, they that also believed shall be counted the children of Abraham. And he said in verse 14, that the blessing of Abraham, which is a righteousness, that Abraham received when he believed, the blessing, the righteousness, might also come on the Gentiles through faith, no longer by works, because child of God, the scripture concluded, he said, our right, all, not some, all our righteousness through the works of the law are as filthy rags before God. No man can be justified before God. All our righteousness are like filthy rags. Are like filthy rags. They, it's not just, they are not just rags, but filthy ones. Dirty rags. Dirty rags. All our all the righteousness, you may say, I don't smoke, I don't womanize, I'm not a this, I'm not a, a I'm not a robber, I'm not a, you know, whatever you may, I obey all the commandments, you know, I go to church, I pay my tithe, I do this one. Listen, everything you want to consider as coming from your own street obedience before God, he says they are all what as filthy rags. The righteousness that qualifies you, that can only qualify you and make you acceptable before God is the righteousness of faith, which can only come to you when you declare that Jesus Christ is your Lord and your Savior because you believe that it is Him that God made to be seen on your behalf as it is written in scripture. For he who knew no sin, God made to be seen, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. He who knew no sin, Christ knew no sin, God made him to be seen for you and for me, for the whole world. Hallelujah. That we might be made what? The righteousness. That that blessing of Abraham might come upon us. I want to read this from um, the Amplified Translation. <laughs> Verses 1 and 2 again. He said, O foolish and thoughtless and superficial Galatians, who has bewitched you, who has bewitched you that you will act like this who be with that you act like this? You want to behave? Why are you acting like this? To whom, right before your very eyes, Jesus Christ was publicly portrayed and crucified in the gospel message. Who oh, have bewitched you? This is all I want to ask you of, or ask of you. Did you receive the Holy Spirit? Did you receive the Holy Spirit as a result of obeying 
the requirements of the law or was it the result of hearing the message of salvation and with faith believing it you hear the message of salvation the message of the death and the resurrection of Jesus and with faith you believed it okay that's right so then does he who supplies you with his marvelous Holy Spirit and works miracles among you do it as a result of the works of the law which you perform or because you believe confidently in the message which you heard with faith you know sometimes you hear someone say look i've been they have been they've been praying for me you know i don't there's no sin i don't do this i don't do that i've gone many times to receive the holy spirit even i can't receive the holy spirit how can you receive the holy spirit because you think that there's no sin in your life or because you are not a sinner or because you are saved by the works of the law it's not possible it's not possible amen it's not possible so verse 5 again so then does he who supplies you with his mother lost holy spirit and works miracle among you do it as a result of the works of the law which you perform or because you believe confidently, confidently in the message which you heard with faith. That says, just as Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. Abraham believed God, it was credited to him, accounted to him for righteousness. Thank you, God. According, excuse me, as conformity to God's will and purpose, so it, it is with you also. Verse 7, so understand that it is the people who live by faith. It is the people who live by faith. It is the people who live by faith with confidence in the power and the goodness of God who are the true sons of God. People who live by faith, that's why the just shall live by faith. Okay? Now, it is the people who do what? Who confidently, hallelujah, live in the power, believe in the power and the goodness of God are the true sons of Abraham. The scripture foreseen that God will justify the Gentiles by faith, proclaim the good news of the Savior to Abraham in advance with this promise, saying, in you, shall all the nations be blessed verse 9 so then those who are people of faith people of faith whether jew or gentiles whether jew or gentile this is interesting whether jews or gentiles whether jews or gentiles hallelujah so it doesn't matter whether you are a jew you will be a believer today if you are a jew and you don't believe that's a different ball game i mean between you and god <laughs> god have told you that the only way you can be saved after the coming of lord jesus christ is by believing in his own sacrifice the sacrifice of his son jesus to take away our sins you know and reconcile us all unto him the most high god thank you father hallelujah lord i bless you for that Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Whether Jew or Gentile are blessed and favored by God and declared free from the guilt of sin and his penalty and placed in right standing with him along with Abraham, the believer. For all who depend on the law, seeking justification and salvation by obedience to the law and the observance of rituals, are under a curse. May you not live that way and be under a curse, thinking that you are blessed. People walk around with curse upon their life, still going to church because they think they're going to church, but they still walk in strict adherence to the law 
they think they are blessed, whether they are under a curse. For it is written, cursed, condemned to destruction is everyone who does not abide by all things written in the book of the law, so as to practice them. Now it is clear that no man is justified, that is, declared free of guilt, of sin, and his penalty, and placed in right standing before God by the law. The righteous, the just, the upright <laughs> shall live by faith. But the law does not rest on or require faith. It has nothing to do with faith. The law has nothing to do with faith. But instead, the law says, he who practices them, the things prescribed by the law, shall live by them. So, like the strong say in, uh, in James, you know, if there are ten laws, and then you succeed in passing nine of them, nine over ten, humanly speaking, which will clap our hands for you that you have done very well. In fact, nine over ten should be excellent. But child of God, in the sight of God, nine over ten is a failure. You fail. If you fail nine, you are like somebody. In fact, if you if you pass nine or pass nine and a half, it's like somebody who just passed only one. You are all failed because the law has nothing to do with the righteousness that God has prescribed for everyone to be saved. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Now, he continues, verse 13, Christ purchased our freedom. Christ purchased your freedom and redeemed us from the curse of the law and its condemnation by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, curse is everyone who hangs crucified on the tree, the cross, in order that in Christ Jesus, the blessing, the blessing, of Abraham might also come to the Gentiles so that we will all receive the realization of the promise of the Holy Spirit through faith. So you cannot say, yes, I'm waiting to receive the Holy Spirit, you know, because I kept the law. I, you know, I'm, I don't smoke, I don't do this, I don't cheat, I don't, you know, I don't uh, steal. I don't lie. If by that condition you're expecting to be given the Holy Spirit or for the going to come into you, then you're missing it and you will never get the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. It is by believing first of all that Jesus was made sin for you. Okay? Believe that Jesus was made sin for you. Believe that he died because of you. God raised him from the dead. No matter how much sin you may have committed in your life, no matter how, how red your sins may have been, no matter how dirty your life may have been, the fact that you believe that all your sins, whether you are a murderer, whether you are a, a, a prostitute, whether you are... You are a liar, you know what, no matter, I don't know, what, I mean, what, 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 what may we call some of those terrible sins that someone will say, this one, can, you cannot be saved. No matter what sin, anybody will think on earth here that, oh, this kind of sin, God can never, there is no sin that God cannot forgive you. Every sin, as long as you come to Christ, no matter the sin you may have committed in the past, as long as you believe that Jesus died for you, listen to me, all your sins are washed away and you are made righteous before God. You are made holy, you are made unblameable, you are made irreprovable before God. You have a clean slate and that righteousness that comes into your life, that is a righteousness that will not determine every other thing as you walk with God on this journey on earth. Look at Romans chapter 4. I read verse 1. He says, What shall we say then that Abraham, our father, as pertaining to the flesh, have found? What did Abraham find? <laughs> what did Abraham? What did he? Now, for if Abraham was justified, were justified by works, he had went off to glory. So if it was the fact that Abraham would say, God, you see, I did this good, I did that good, I did this, I did that, you know, and so I finished it. Then Abraham can boast. 
Don't forget, he said, we are saved by grace in Ephesians. We are saved by grace through faith. Okay? He said, it is a word, the, the gifts of God. Okay? Let nobody boast. You cannot boast that, oh, I am, I, if I wasn't strong, if I wasn't intelligent, if I wasn't rich, if I wasn't slim, if I wasn't fat, if I wasn't tall, if I wasn't short, if I wasn't this, it has nothing to do with your personal qualification. It has nothing to do. You simply believe based on the grace that God has made available and so you were saved. You cannot boast before somebody else. Look at you, you can't get saved. You were not, you didn't get saved yourself by your own strength. He said, for by no, he said, for by strength shall no man prevail. You cannot prevail in the sight of God by your own personal strength. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. So Abraham would have answered to glory. Okay. If he was saved, justified by his works, he said, would have answered to glory, but not before God. But for what say the scripture? Abraham believed God. Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for what righteousness. God, like we saw in the Galatians, he believed God, and it was counted to him for righteousness. That was what he found. Verse 4, thank you, Lord. Now, to him that worketh is the reward, not reckoned of grace. If you walk, of course, you are being old, but when you didn't walk and somebody gives you something, that it was given to people who walked, then it's the grace of God. It's not because you walked. Hallelujah. Now, the record him of grace, but of death. But to him that walketh, but walketh not, you didn't walk, but believed on him that justified the ungodly. His faith is counted for righteousness. So if you didn't walk and you are being given what is being given to people that walked, and of course you know it, you cannot glory, you cannot make noise. You can't boast because you know it was just, they just look at, God just gave it to you. <laughs> he just gave it to you. You didn't qualify for it. Okay. But if you had worked, then you can beat your chest and say, yes, I worked for this thing. I worked for it. That is why I was being paid. But in this case, you didn't work for it and God gave it to you free of charge. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for your grace and mercy. Amen and amen. Verse 5, say, but to him that walketh not, but believed on him, that justified the ungodly, his faith is counted for what? For righteousness. You know, this is exactly what we read in Galatians. You didn't walk, you believed. So your, that faith is counted for what? For righteousness. Now look at this, interesting. As David also described it, the blessedness of the man. The blessedness. Of the man unto whom God imputed righteousness without works, the blessedness, the blessedness of the man unto whom God what imputed righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven. Whose iniquities are forgiven. They say, Blessed are they. That God gave one million dollars, twenty million dollars, or children. No, that's a different aspect of blessing. No, but the blessing that God blessed Abraham when he believed, what God gave to Abraham because of his faith is what is righteousness. Righteousness, Hallelujah! It's righteousness. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. <laughs> now, I take it again. Now, saying, Blessed are, are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Verse 8 Blessed is a man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Blessed is a man to whom God will not impute sin. You are blessed. So, when I, you don't, you don't look at me, or let me put it this way. You don't, you don't say I am blessed when you see cars or living large, then that you say I am blessed. Then if I don't have anything, you know, materially speaking, financially speaking, that you can lay hold on, but I, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, 
He died for my sins. And in the sight of God, I am made righteous for you. You will say, this man is not blessed because he doesn't have anything. Well, that's I am blessed. God already blessed me. God already blessed me. So, my blessing is not dependent on the material blessings or the material substances. My blessing, God has blessed me, whether I have money in my pocket today or not, I am blessed. Whether I have material blessings or not, I am blessed. Because the blessing of Abraham, which we are going to see also, okay, because like I said, this blessing is what will open the door for all other blessings. This is not to say when God blesses you or when, when you serve God, you are not going to have material blessing or financial blessing or, or reigning life. Mm -mm. But don't let your mind, our mind should not always be on the material blessing or the financial blessing. We are blessed already because we are made righteous by God. God has given us the gift of who the unbeliever that has all the money, has all the material things, may not have. The unbeliever, in other words, your, 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 your blessings in the sight of God is not dependent on the amount of wealth, material wealth or possession that you have. No, you are blessed because you are the righteousness of God in Christ. Thank you, Lord. You are blessed. If only you have said that, Lord Jesus Christ, you are my Lord and my because I believe all my sins were laid upon you. According to scripture, that I might be made your, the righteousness of God in you. That's a blessing. <laughs> Father, I thank you. I'm blessed. Lord, I thank you for blessing me. I'm blessed with the blessing of Abraham. I thank you, Lord, for that. Verse. What verse? I read verse 9 again. I read verse 9. Was I there before? Okay. I read verse 9. Come this blessedness then upon the circumcision only, or upon the uncircumcision also. For we say that faith will reckon to Abraham for righteousness. How was it then reckoned? When he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? This is very interesting. Not in circumcision. In other words, Abraham was not circumcised before God imputed it to him. He said not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. Because circumcision was a mark, a seal of the Old Testament laws. Circumcision was a seal. Now, so Abraham, God blessed when he has not done what? When he has not done anything or when he has not been circumcised. Because if you have been circumcised to the seal of the Old Testament laws or whatever, then it will have mean that it was because of his obedience. His obedience, that was why God declared him righteous. But no, God made him righteous when he was in uncircumcision. In uncircumcision. And that was because he believed. Verse 11. Thank you, our God. And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal. You see now? He now, after being blessed, they given the, 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 the gift of righteousness, he now received what? Circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith, which he had yet been uncircumcised. Mm. Which he had yet been uncircumcised. <laughs> So circumcision came after one God had given him the gift of righteousness. He had received a gift of righteousness. So that circumcision now came as a seal of it to say, yeah, because you have been circumcised. I mean, you are believed. You are now made righteous because you believed my word. So go ahead. Amen. A seal of righteousness which is of faith, which he had yet been uncircumcised, that he might be the father of them that believe, though they be not circumcised. 
they be not circumcised. You know, Gentiles were not given the law. We have talked about this before. So when we talk about the laws, the Levitical laws, the laws of Moses, these were not laws that were given to Gentiles, were given only to the, to the Jews. So we are all sinners. But in the sight of God, will I said also, those laws were given not to change man, but to restrain the evil tendencies in man. You know, to bring them to that place where, of course, both they and us will receive the promise of God, the coming of Lord Jesus Christ, accepting Jesus Christ, okay, who came into the world to die, to take care of every sin, the sin of every man. Hallelujah. Thank you, our God. But I bless you. I just, I just bless you, Lord. I God bless you. I bless you, Lord. Verse 12. Verse 12. And the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of the faith of our father Abraham, which he had been yet uncircumcised. Abraham received it when he was not circumcised. It wasn't when he was circumcised. So it was not by his works. Hallelujah. For the promise that he should be heir of the world was not to Abraham and to his seed through the law but through the righteousness of faith. Did you see that now? The promise that Abraham should be the heir, okay, of the world, the Bible said was not given to him or to his seed by the works of the law, but through what? The righteousness of faith. The righteousness of faith, not the righteousness of the law. Hallelujah. Not the righteousness of the law. Now, look at, look, at, look, at, look at this. Look at this. So that you don't, you will not be thinking that because I, I, am, a, I am obedient to the laws, I do this, I, that's why I'm blessed. Or oh, that is why I'm going to reign in life. That must, I, I must reign over Satan. No. <laughs> Romans chapter 5. You know, the next uh, 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 chapter. Now, Romans 5. Verse 17, he said, For if by one man's offense, by one which is Adam's offense, death reigned by one, much more they which receive the abundance of grace, they that receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, will receive the abundance of grace, will receive the abundance of grace, the grace of God, God rewarding us not because we did anything that's grace god doing to you rewarding you not because you did anything you qualified for it uh -uh. you didn't qualify for it god rewarded us the abundance of his grace and then the gift of righteousness okay shall reign in life by one jesus christ so if you expect to reign in this world, to reign in life, because of your strict obedience to the law, then you are making a very big mistake. He said those who receive the abundance of grace, the grace of God. Paul said, I am what I am today by the grace of God. I am what I am by the grace of God. You will only be what God ordains you to be by His grace. Through the faith that you exercise upon that grace of God. I am what I am by the grace of God. Hallelujah. I believe in the sacrifice of the Son of God. So that brings me to that place of right standing with God. It brings me to the place of right standing with God. Now, if I, if, I, if I come to the place of right standing with God, that opens the door. It opens the door for any other blessing. It opens the door. For what? For every other blessing. Why? Because righteousness is what exalts a nation or an individual. According to Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 14, verse 4. He said, well, righteousness exalts a nation. Sin is a reproach. Sin brings reproach. 
Sin brings reproach. Sin brings problem. Sin opens the door for the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is sickness, disease, calamities, mention it. The wages of sin, oh, the wages of sin is are terrible. They are terrible. Terrible. They're terrible. God said, for the wages of sin is death. Sin is a reproach. Sin will bring somebody down. We bring nations down. Sin will destroy a people. But he said what? Righteousness exhausts, lifts up a nation. Righteousness lifts up an individual. For they that receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life. What will make you to reign is realizing that you are made righteous. By the faith of God. You are made righteous. And then be conscious. Living the consciousness of this. In the consciousness of the fact that God has made you right. That you are blessed. Your blessing first and foremost is the fact that you have been made righteous by God. So when I sing or when you sing. Abraham blessings are mine. Understand that it is not first the material blessings you are looking at. When you sing that song, Abraham blessing am mine, Abraham blessing is mine. You know, because th th those are the mistakes. Our mind is always on the blessing that follow. The cows, the silver, the gold, and all of those stuff. We don't think, we don't talk about the blessing, the one blessing, the gift of righteousness that opened the door for the silver, for the gold, for the cattle, the camels. No. So, I should rather be saying, Abraham, blessing is mine. Abraham, blessing is mine. Abraham, blessing. Not the blessings yet. Because you can be singing Abraham blessings and mine because you are looking at all the material and financial blessings he had. And then you miss out the proper blessing and then you are walking in sin, living in sin, singing that song and not being blessed. And you are wondering why it's not working. The word of God works. All the promises of God are all in him, yea and amen. If God says you are blessed, you are blessed. But listen to me. You must have the foundation for the other blessings to come upon your life. The foundation you need to have for the other blessings to come is the foundation of the righteousness which you receive because you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God who died for you, whom God raised up from the dead, and he is alive. Praise the name of the Lord. Abraham is my blessing. The blessing of Abraham, the blessing, the blessing of Abraham is my blessing because I believe like faithful Abraham. I believe like faithful Abraham. I believe God. He said, For with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. Abraham believed unto righteousness. With your heart, you believe also unto righteousness. Hallelujah. So with this righteousness, then you can expect. Because when right standing with God, child of God, by the grace of God, through faith, you are in right standing with God. Then with this righteousness, no thing, no devil, no devil, no devil, I mean it, no devil shall harass you. No devil shall harass you. No devil should harass you. God, the way God fought for Abraham, God will fight for you that way. Abraham was a very strong man. Not by his own power, but by the help of God. God was with him. God will be with you. In your challenges, God will show up. 
He said to Abraham, he said, the seed of Abraham will possess the gate of their enemies. All those are the blessings, the blessings that will follow the first initial foundational blessing, the gift of righteousness. The gift of righteousness. If you don't believe that and be conscious of that blessing, that you are the righteousness of God, if you don't believe it and be conscious of it, then of course, every other confession and faith you're exercising is just, you are just like the unbeliever. Nothing, nothing, there is no difference between an unbeliever who though works in sin, but is still looking for material blessing and financial blessing. Sin, sin is a reproach. Sin is a reproach. Righteousness is what exalts. But I bless the Lord that he has imputed into our account, into us, that gift of righteousness. Why? Because you believe. Why? Because I believe. So I stand as the righteousness of God, not by my works, not by my power, by what? By the grace of God. He says in Isaiah that God made me what? The planting of righteousness. The planting of righteousness so that he will be glorified. So because I've been made the righteousness of God, all the blessings, all that blessing, the things that accompany this, it puts me therefore in the place where I must see God as my source, where I must give glory to God for every other good thing that comes into my life. Every other blessing I receive, they, they come into my life, I receive them on account of the fact that First and foremost, I'm standing on the righteousness of faith, not of my works, not of my works. And whether presently I have something, material things to show or not, that does not determine whether I'm blessed. I'm already blessed. You are already blessed. If you have made Jesus your Lord and your Savior. Hallelujah. With Christ in your life, you are blessed. If you have Jesus, you have received Jesus. And this is what qualifies you for the gift of the Holy Ghost. This is what qualifies for the gift of the Holy Ghost. Because you have received the Holy Spirit. Your body is not qualified because he said you cannot put a new wine in an old wine's bottle. So God has made you a new bottle also to enable him bring in that word, the new wine, which is the Holy Ghost. Amen. So I have the Holy Ghost because that is a new wine because God prepared this body. He gave me that gift of righteousness. He took away that heart of sin and put in me, inside this body, a new heart. A new creature. That's who I am. That can receive the Holy Spirit. So don't expect to be filled with the Holy Ghost until you have truly received the gift of righteousness. How do you receive the gift of righteousness? Believing in your heart that Jesus died for you a sinner. That God raised him up from the dead because of you. Because he went to hell. He was buried on the ground here and then went to hell. But God raised him up and he's right now seated at the right hand of God the Father on high. And you confess him as your Lord and your Savior. 
Confess him as your Lord and your Savior. He said, for with your heart, you believe unto righteousness. And with your mouth, you make confession unto salvation. Let us pray. If you have not made Jesus your Lord, do so now. If you have not received him, if you have not believed, if you have been thinking that because I go to church, I don't smoke, I don't, I don't commit sin, so to speak, I don't know how many kind of sins you think you don't commit, but you have been thinking you are a Christian because, like some will say, I obey the Ten Commandments, I do this and I do that one. It is not by your doing. It is not by your doing. You cannot become a Christian, you cannot be saved by your doing. You can only become a Christian, you can only be saved by simply believing that Jesus Christ died for you, God raised him from there. So begin to say to the Lord, Lord, I believe. I believe you came because of me. You died on the cross because of me. You poured out your blood on the cross because of me. Today, I also believe that God raised you up from the dead because of me. And I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Don't pray it out. Not, don't, it's, don't, it's not like don't close your mouth and... Mm. If you believe it, speak it. He said, he said, if you believe, do what? We believe and therefore we speak. He said, I have believed and therefore I have spoken. We also believe and so we speak. So if you believe, speak it. Say it with your mouth. Lord, I believe. You died for my sins. God raised you from the dead. I receive you to that's my Lord and my Savior. I confess you with my mouth that you are my Lord. I confess you with my mouth that you are my Savior. You are the one that saved me. Be my Lord, therefore, is I will obey you. I will follow you. Whatever you say to me to do, I will do. Wherever you say for me to go, I will go. I will believe your word. Thank you, Jesus. Every word of God you believe, righteousness is imputed into your account. That is why the Bible says that, he said for the word, for the righteousness is revealed in the gospel. Righteousness is revealed in the gospel. So as you're going to live by faith, believing God, believing his word, every word you believe, righteousness is word is imputed. You are then being established in righteousness. That is why, child of God, you must be a doer of the word, not just a hearer. Believe the word. Act on the word because if you believe, you should do. So believe as you believe and as you do. Righteousness is what imputed. You are being established in the righteousness of God. For he said, in righteousness shall you be established. In righteousness you shall be stand, and fear shall not come because he said the righteous is as bold as a lion. Fear will not come, fear will disappear. Knowing who you are. So I pray for everyone tonight. Daddy, we are not standing here on account of what you have done. We are here because you made us righteous. We are here before you, Lord, because we believe that Jesus is your son who died for us, who went to hell, whom you raised up from the dead, and he's alive. And because we believe you have imputed into our account this gift of righteousness. And according to your word, because we receive the abundance of your grace, and this day we shall reign in life. And so, Father, by your grace, I decree and I declare that your children shall reign in life. In every circumstance, they shall reign and they shall rule over their enemies, over the works of the wicked. For this is the victory that Jesus also purchased for us. Because in him we are righteous. In him we have the victory. And by the authority in your word, I command 
every work of darkness, every spirit of infirmity, every spirit of the wicked, opposing, resisting, troubling, oppressing any of your sons or daughters to be destroyed and get back to hell in Jesus' mighty name. I command every evil hand resting upon you, child of God, to be broken in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I command every work of the devils that have been set up to bring you under a reproach to be destroyed and that reproach return back to the sender because you are the righteousness of God in Christ. You are not cursed, but you are blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Father in heaven, I say thank you. Child of God, go reign in life. Go and reign in life, not by your power, but because you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Go and reign in life. Don't be intimidated because the righteous, they are as bold as a lion. When the devil, the lion, as a lowering lion, comes roaring against you, child of God, remember you are bold. Remember you are the righteousness of God. And then roar back to the devil. Roar back to the devil. Resist him. Roar back and he will flee from you, not by your power, not by your mind, but by the grace of God, by the spirit of God that is with you. And he roar back to the devil. Let the devil flee because, child of God, you know that you are not right up by works. You are not right up because you were you made you were you 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 you, you did what God said you should do or you didn't do what God no you are right up because you simply believed you are a believer you are a believer don't be intimidated therefore I stand against the spirit of timidity I stand against every spirit of shyness I stand against every spirit of cowardice I bind them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I command their power, their influence over your mind, over your life to be frustrated. Arise in the name of Jesus Christ, child of God. Arise in the boldness, in the name of Jesus, and possess your possession. Take back that would belong to you. Trust God, take back that would belong to you. Stand on that gift of righteousness and take back would belong to you. Father, Lord, I say thank you. Daddy, thank you, Lord. Take all the glory and all the honor for the gift of righteousness. We are one with you. We are one with you, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, you are not to help us. Just glorify the Father. Daddy, all the glory and all the honor we give to you because it's only by your grace that we are whatever we are and whatever we will be. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. I believe you have been blessed, child of God. You are blessed because you receive the word of righteousness, the word of his grace. Amen. Because every word of God you believe, you receive, it imputes what? Righteousness into your account. Because that is where the, 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 the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. Amen. So you are blessed. Hallelujah. I say you are blessed. All other blessings, as you believe God's word, as you lay hold on those promises, they shall come us into manifestation in your life. Hallelujah. Every other blessing will come into, your, will come into manifestation as you believe them. Hallelujah. God will not look at you and say, well, I'm not going to do for you because you are black or you are light complexion or you are big or slim or whatever. No. You are a believer. God will honor his word in your life. Hallelujah. So stay blessed. Okay? Because I've been blessed. Stay blessed. Stay blessed. Stay blessed. Because you have been blessed. I am blessed. We are blessed because God has blessed us, given us that gift.
of righteousness. Hallelujah. Okay, so as we come to the end of the meeting today, I want to remind us again that on Sunday, in fact, this weekend, we continue with the uh, the, uh, the Arise, Arise 2022. Arise 2022. Saturday, 10, 10 a.m. in the morning, there is what program they have on, on Saturday? Career okay, career development and uh, health, talk. health talk. So we encourage you to be there. You know, I believe God will you will you you will gain some things and you will be blessed in Jesus' mighty name. So come join us. The address of the church is there, you know, on the comment section, you know. So come believing, come believing that God will speak to you. Okay, your life shall be transformed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. On Sunday, the meeting continues. Arise, but Sunday is not 10 o'clock, it's 9 o'clock. So we encourage you to join us by 9 a.m. in the morning on Sunday. The address also is there. And I pray that anything that the devil wants to use to keep you away from being part of this meeting, the Lord frustrate them in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. So we look forward to seeing you. And on coming Wednesday, by the grace of God, we may look at something else. Amen. God has so much to say to us. God has so much to say to us. So let's all receive grace to receive this word that will transform our lives to the glory and honor of our God in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. You are blessed already. You are more than a conqueror. You are victorious. Amen. The victory of Jesus over Satan, over poverty, over failure, barrenness, reproach, that victory is already your victory. So stand on that victory and declare it, proclaim it, enforce it in your world. Hallelujah. Satan has been defeated. Let him know that you know that you know that he has been defeated. You are not riding, you are not coming to overcome him with your own machete or with your or your or your shotgun or AK-47 or whatever gun. No, you are not carrying any weapon to that because our the weapons of our warfare they are not kind of mighty through God. In the name of Jesus, child of God, you are more than a conqueror. Mm -hmm. The victory of Jesus, or I say, and this is the victory that has overcome the devil, that overcome the world, even our faith in him that has overcome the world. Hallelujah. So, Lord Jesus, we declare tonight that your victory over the devils, over this world, our victory. Amen. In you, we are more than conquerors. In you, we are victorious. In you, we are winners. In you, we are prosperous. In you, we are divinely protected and shielded from anything and everything that the world, the hell, we want to offer in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We bless and glorify you, our Lord. Thank you, Father. Child of God, as you go and as you give to the ministry, may the Lord receive your gift, your seed. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord give you durable riches. May the Lord cause men to give back to you good measure, pressed and shaking together and running over. May the Lord open treasures, hidden treasures unto you. May the Lord grant, yes, that you will walk in abundance of his wealth in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So Heavenly Father, I say thank you for blessing your children as we give to your work, even here in grace for now shall favor. Take all the glory and all the honor of God. Stay blessed, child of God. Stay safe. And above all, may you stay rapturable because Jesus is coming again. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise the Lord. So thank you for being part of the meeting tonight. So stay blessed and until Saturday when we'll see you again. Okay? So remain and continue in that blessing that God has blessed you. Stay righteous. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. Goodbye.